So previously, we've derived the standard equation for the hyperbola. Now in this video, let's describe the main features that will allow us to be able to sketch them. So the curve shown in orange here is a typical hyperbola that is constructed from the standard equation x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. The first of the main features is the center point. Now all hyperbolas of the standard form have their center at the origin, 0, 0. And we'll discuss equations for hyperbolas not centered about the origin in a different video. Secondly, let's have a look at the vertices. And these are points where the branches of the hyperbola cross the x-axis. So here and here, let's label these as A, point A, and point A prime. And because these points lie on the x-axis, their y-coordinate is equal to 0. So if we substitute y equals 0 into the standard equation, we have x squared on a squared minus 0 squared on b squared is equal to 1. And this reduces down to x squared on a squared is equal to 1. So we say x squared is equal to a squared. So if we solve for x, we get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of a squared, which of course is equal to positive or negative a. So the x coordinate of the vertices takes on either positive a or negative a. So we say the vertex capital A has the coordinates a comma zero and a prime as negative a comma zero. All right, so these are the vertices. Next, let's have a look at the focal points. So on the chart here, we'll label these focal points as f and f prime. And previously, for convention, we've given them arbitrary coordinates of c0 and negative c0. So the goal here is to find an expression for c. And to do this, we'll need to reference the directrices, which are these vertical cyan lines. So we'll denote these as d and d prime. And we'll use the right-hand directrix. So we'll give this the equation x equals d. And it has an equation because it is a line as opposed to a point, which will have a distinct coordinate. Now let's establish some relationships here. The definition for the hyperbola. So if we take a point on the hyperbola, let's take the vertex point A. So the distance from A to the focus, the distance AF, over the distance from the point A to the directrix. So let's call that the distance AD, so AF divided by the distance AD is equal to the eccentricity. And of course, for a hyperbola, the eccentricity is greater than 1. And from this, we have the relationship AF is equal to E times AD. Similarly, let's look at the opposite point on the other branch, the uh, vertex A prime. Now it's distance to the same focus, so a prime f over its distance to the same directrix, a prime d is also equal to the eccentricity. So we also have the relationship a prime f is equal to e times a prime d. And since we have coordinates for the focal point, and the vertices, we can express the distance AF as C minus A. So AF, we can say, is equal to C minus A. The distance AD, and since A is to the right of the directrix, we have A minus D. So remember, the directrix is D to the right of the origin, and the vertex A is A to the right of the origin, so we have A minus D as the distance AD. 
So thus we have the relationship C minus A is equal to E times A minus D. And of course we can expand the E into the parentheses. So we have EA minus ED. And let's call this relationship equation 1, or equation I. Similarly, for the other side, we have A prime F will be equal to C plus A. So the distance from the origin to F is the distance C, and then the distance from the origin to A prime is the distance A. So we have C plus A, and the distance A prime D. So the distance from A prime to the origin is A, and then we plus another distance of D to the directrix. So the second relationship, let's call this II, is given by C plus A is equal to E times A plus D. And we can rewrite that as EA plus ED. So let's now add the relationships I and II, or 1 and 2. C minus A equals EA minus ED, and we add that to the equation C plus A equals EA plus ED. Alright, so C plus C gives 2C, negative A plus A gives 0, equals EA plus EA gives 2EA, and negative ED plus ED gives 0. So we have... 2C equals 2EA, which of course means C is equal to EA. So therefore the focal points are located at EA, 0 and negative EA, 0. Next let's get a proper expression for the directrices. So we want to find an expression for D. We've already got equation 1 and 2. Instead of adding them, let's subtract them now. So we have C minus A equals EA minus ED. Then we subtract from that C plus A equals EA plus ED. So C minus C gives 0. A minus A gives negative 2A equals EA minus EA gives 0 and negative ED minus ED gives negative 2ED. So this gives us the relationship negative 2A equals negative 2ED which means A is equal to ED so solving for D we get D is equal to A on E. So therefore the directrices are given by X equals A on E and X equals negative A on E. Alright, so the final feature we need to fully describe a hyperbola are the asymptotes. And before I do that, let's clear some space. So the asymptotes are here shown by the green dashed lines. See, as the curve of the hyperbola gets further and further away from the origin, the curve becomes straighter and straighter, and it becomes more and more in line with the green dashed line, but it will never ever touch or cross the dashed line. So that's why we call them the asymptotes, because as we tend to infinity, the orange curve will get infinitely close to the green dashed line, but it will never touch. Now one way to find the equation of the asymptotes is to consider the values of A and B. So remember from the ellipse that A represents the x-coordinate where the ellipse crosses the x-axis, so the x-intercept, and B represents the y-coordinate where the ellipse crosses the y-axis, so the y-intercept. But as you can see here, the hyperbola has no y-intercept. Okay, so if we set the standard equation, the value of x to 0, we get the equation negative y squared 
on b squared equals 1, and because of this negative here, this equation has no real solutions. But if we still consider b as a point on the y-axis, so let's make up a point b, given by 0, comma b, and the point b prime, and let's make that 0, comma negative b. So on the chart, I can mark the point b here, and let's say b prime is down here. Now let's construct a horizontal line that goes through the point B. And let's make this a dashed line. And we'll do the same for B prime. And we'll also make this a dashed line. Now let's construct vertical lines that run through the vertex A. And we'll make that a dashed line too. And similarly, we'll do the same for A prime. Okay, so we'll tidy up these edges a little bit. All right, now, so we have a box or a rectangle that has the width A, A prime. And let's mark that in yellow. And this is called the transverse axis. The height of the box is BB, we call this the conjugate axis. And to demonstrate the next step, let me switch off these asymptotes. So once we have drawn this box, what you can then do is to draw a line from corner to corner of this box and extend this through to form the asymptote. And the end result is what we get when we turn these asymptotes back on. So from this, the slope of the asymptotes is given by, so we have here a rise of B and a run of A. So we have B on A. And of course, since it's a line that goes through the origin, there's no y-intercept to consider. So the equation of the positive asymptote is simply y equals B on A times X. And the negative asymptote is the same, except for we have y equals negative b on a times x. Now there's a second and perhaps easier way to find the equations of the asymptotes. And let me again clear some space down here. And this again involves considering the behavior of the hyperbola as we get further and further away from the origin. So the standard equation, x squared on a squared minus y squared on b squared equals 1. If we rearrange this, let's make y squared on b squared the subject. So we have y squared on b squared equals x squared on a squared minus 1. And if we apply the square root to both sides, we get y on b equals positive or negative the square root of x squared on a squared minus 1. And then taking the b to the other side gives y equals positive or negative b times the square root of x squared on a squared minus 1. Now if we just consider the term here, the x squared on a squared minus 1, what we can observe is that as x gets bigger in either direction, the squared here of course makes this much much larger. So therefore as x gets bigger, this minus 1 here becomes largely irrelevant. So as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the equation behaves more like y is equal to positive or negative b times the square root of x squared on a squared. And of course the square root of x squared on a squared is simply x on a. And from this we can conclude that y equals positive or negative b on a times x to be the asymptotes. Now putting it all together, So in summary, we have the vertices at a0 and negative a0. 
we have the focal points at AE0 and negative AE0. We have the directrix at X equals A on E and X equals negative A on E. We can construct the conjugate axis from the points 0, B and 0, negative B. And finally, the asymptotes have the equation Y equals B on A times X and Y equals negative B on A times X. So this was quite a comprehensive video on all of the features of the hyperbola. In the next video, we'll use all of what we've learned here to sketch them hyperbolas. So until then, please subscribe to my channel for updates. If you found this video useful, give me a thumbs up. Best of luck with your studies and I'll see you next time.